President Trump cancels the Iran nuclear deal and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo brings home three, count them, three U.S. prisoners from North Korea. But does Trump's approach calm or scare the stock market? More important, how will his Iran and Korean policies affect our portfolios? Unemployment in the U.S. fell in April to one of the lowest levels of the post-World War II era, less than 4%. Is this good for our portfolios? Small cap stocks accelerate as an asset class leader on the relative rotation graph and reminding you of our first webinar. Do you know what's in your portfolio? If you don't, you should. If you want to know, we can help. Here's what's moving the markets and your money. I'm Charles Brown. It's Thursday, May 10th, and this is CB3 on 3. At CB3 Financial Group, we don't just manage your assets, we become one of them. Before I bring you today's events affecting our portfolios, we're pleased to announce and remind you of our first ever interactive webinar. Many of you contact me between episodes of CB3 on 3 asking questions on matters I simply don't have time to cover in my weekly program. Now you'll be able to learn about topics that interest you, ask me questions in real time, as well as hear other viewers' questions too. More details soon. In political influences, I hardly know where to start. Just hours ago, President Trump announced he will meet with Kim Jong-un in Singapore on June 12th. This past Tuesday, President Trump issued an executive order withdrawing from the landmark 2015 Iran nuclear deal. The move was a heads up to U.S. allies and enemies that, in his foreign policy decisions, Mr. Trump values action over Washington's caution. During his first year in office, Mr. Trump often capitulated to the advice of cautious national security aides. At their urging, he added troops to the war in Afghanistan, delayed plans to move the U.S. Embassy in Israel to Jerusalem, and preserved a nuclear containment deal with Iran, even though he reviled it. That stance appears to be over. Here's my take on the political implications for our investments. Mr. Trump's allies acknowledge the dangers posed by our president's approach, but they say the tactics are already paying dividends, especially by pushing hard on Kim Jong-un, North Korea's mercurial leader. Get used to it, folks. It's the art of the deal in motion. President Trump refuses to be bound by existing agreements that are not in America's best interest. His strategy? exit or threaten to exit these agreements and use maximum pressure to get a better deal for U.S. interest, as the president largely bypasses the U.S. State Department setting down his own diplomatic agenda and strategies. Mr. Trump has come to trust that his tactics to prod, cajole, and intimidate global rivals can do what his predecessors could not. How does this affect our portfolios? Well, what I'm seeing is that over the course of the last few weeks, maybe month or so, the market has become more accustomed to Mr. Trump's unpredictable tactics. For our portfolios, this is a positive, as the erratic moves from February, March, and April of this year appear to be calming down as the markets accept Mr. Trump's style as the new de facto for U.S. foreign policy. In fundamental influences, unemployment in the U.S. fell in April to one of the lowest levels of the post-World War II era, 3.9% as the result of a historically long U.S. jobs expansion that shows little evidence of slowing. At the same time, gasoline in the U.S. is hitting $3 a gallon for the first time in quite a while. As I reported last week, driving the price of gasoline is a resurgence in crude oil futures now trading at four-year highs. Here's my take on the fundamental implications for our investments. In addition to the historic 3.9% unemployment rate from April, U.S. producer prices edged up just slightly higher last month, a possible sign that inflation pressure remains modest. From a year earlier, producer prices advanced 2.6 last month, the smallest annual increase since December. Markets like what I call Goldilocks inflation data, not too strong and not too weak. The latest data point to just that, mildly building inflation pressures, and that is a positive for stocks as we head into the summer months. In technical influences, looking at all the world's major indices, the markets can seem overwhelming. But zoom in and focus on the U.S. markets and there is a new leader. 
the small cap asset class whose strength we have been reporting on for the last several months has finally entered the leading quadrant, joining the NASDAQ itself accelerating further into the leading quadrant. Further technical good news is that the S&P 500 has just broken out of its trading range as of yesterday and is continuing that breakout as of this morning. As we look for new stocks to buy heading into the summer, small caps and technology will be our favorite places for ideas. With 85% of S&P 500 companies having reported their first quarter earnings, revenue and profits are looking very strong. And that's CB3 on 3 for Thursday, May 10th. What's in your portfolio? If you don't know, you should. If you want to know, we can help. I'm Charles Brown and at CB3 Financial Group, we don't just manage your assets, we become one of them.